Hey everyone, thank you for jumping on today and welcome, welcome, welcome. I am going to be talking about a couple of really exciting things today. Um, we're going to be starting a new series over here on 20 Dishes. Um, and today I'm going to explain what that series is and then I have some uh, special announcements and a little insider secret uh, for you guys as well. So today I'm announcing the launch of our new series called um, Junk Food Made Real. And so every week I'm going to come on here and I'm going to talk about a really popular junk food that people may like and I'm going to offer some substitutions for them. So um, today we're going to be talking about Pop-Tarts. So I personally was never a huge Pop-Tart fan, but I grew up with some people who were absolutely addicted to Pop-Tarts. They pretty much like lived on Pop-Tarts. So that's why I chose that as one of the first things um, to talk about. So the first thing that I need to ask you guys, um, I have two questions for you. So, well, one question, one request. So the first question is, uh, what is your all time favorite junk food? Leave me a comment down below. I would love to know what that one junk food is that you, you just keep going back to even though you know you probably shouldn't be eating it, um, that it's not all that good for you. But let me know in the comments below what that junk food is and I will do my best to either recreate that junk food for you or find a recipe somewhere um, that will substitute a real ingredient and still give you like that same um, you know, taste and comfort. So many of our junk food cravings that we get is um, it's an emotional and a mental uh, comfort thing too. So food plays a huge role in comfort in our lives. So um, leave me a comment down below um, about what your favorite popcorn, or popcorn. I just, saw, I just saw Mickey comment about the white cheddar popcorn and got popcorn in my mind. So favorite junk food, comment below, let me know. And then also, um, I totally had something else that I was going to say and I, I forgot what it was. So question of the day, um, for you guys that are uh, new to 20 Dishes or new to me, let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Jessica and I am one of the co-founders um, of 20 Dishes, which is um, a meal planning site with some secret sauce. So we're pretty different from other meal planning sites in that we actually are teaching you strategies. Um, we have a proven system that will get you in and out of the kitchen uh, fast. So, you know, meal plans are a dime a dozen, but we really help you take those meal plans from paper to plate in record time because time is of the essence in everybody's life. And it's the one, um, you know, the one thing that we, we can't get back. We can't get more time. We all have the same amount of time every day. So what can we do to improve um, our healthy eating uh, while saving some time? So that's 20 dishes in a nutshell. Um, I actually came to 20 dishes. I was, uh, I think the universe brought me and Orletha and Kelly together to create this company. Um, we each have uh, individual stories about how re real food has impacted our lives and you know, helped improve our health. And so now we're just really passionate about spreading that um, with everybody else. And so we're actually on a mission as a company to change the life of 1 million people through real food. That's our ultimate goal. And then once we hit 1 million, we will up that to 2 million and then 3 million. So you guys can help us on this mission by liking and sharing and commenting on these videos um, and just helping to spread the word of real food and healthy eating. And that really helps us out a lot. And it lets us know that you guys want more videos like this as well. So um, today we're talking about Pop-Tarts. And so I actually was going to make the recipe um, for the Pop-Tart replacement, but I ran out of time last night. So you're gonna have to just hop over to the blog to see a picture of that. But the link to the healthy Pop-Tart recipe is in the video description. It's over on our blog. You can go check it out, see the pretty pictures and make up a batch for yourself. So I actually went on um, the Pop-Tarts website and I printed off their nutrition label. So the recipe that we have over on the blog is for raspberry Pop-Tarts. And so I went and I found their frosted raspberry Pop-Tart. So it's hard to see, but here's all of the ingredients. And there's all sorts of stuff in here, tons and tons of ingredients. I don't know, there's probably easily like 30 or 40 ingredients maybe in here. Um, I didn't do an actual count on it, but on our healthy Pop-Tarts recipe over on the blog, there's a total of 13 ingredients and that includes both the dough portion and also the raspberry filling too. And everything is made with um, real food ingredients, no refined sugars, no refined flours, nothing artificial, nothing processed, blah, blah, blah. So um, the frosted raspberry, you know, there's a bunch of ingredients in here, frankly, that I don't really think need to be in there. 
But some of the ones that are the most concerning, um, first and foremost, we have uh, wheat flour. Now, wheat in and of itself, I don't necessarily believe is the devil that a lot of communities have made it out to be. Yes, there are people who have um, gluten sensitivities. I'm one of those people um, and I can't eat gluten at all. But I think that the rise in the issues that we're having now with people developing celiac disease and gluten sensitivities and whatever uh, range that may be, some people it's very severe, some people it's very minor. I, I'm purely speculating here, but it is backed up by some people who are doing research in this area now that um, wheat itself is not necessarily the issue. It's how our wheat is grown and processed. So a lot of people don't realize that Roundup, um, which is uh, glyphosate, it's a chemical um, pesticide. So the Roundup that you buy at your uh, Home Depot, for example, is the same thing. So the wheat crops are sprayed with that um, while they're growing, but a lot of people don't realize that they also douse the wheat fields in Roundup before harvest. So right before the wheat is harvested, it's getting a whole bunch of chemicals dumped right on top of it and then it soaks into the wheat and then we in turn are now, you know, ingesting all these chemicals. So I have some purely speculation. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens over the next 10 years because there's a lot of scientists and stuff researching now the relation between the Roundup use on wheat and what it's doing to our health. So I don't think that wheat in and of itself is the problem. I think it's how it's processed. So if you do consume wheat, um, and have no issues with it, that's fantastic. I would just encourage you to maybe look to some of the heirloom strains, like the einkorn is a really um, untampered, it hasn't been um, uh, hybridized as much. It's still a pretty clean strain. Get organic wheat so that the Roundup is not used on it. Um, but I'm not anti-wheat. If you can tolerate it, then that's fantastic. I would just encourage you not to use conventional wheat. I would um, encourage you to buy organic. Um, and then the heirloom strains, if you can find those in your area, but you can find them online too, if you can't find them locally. So that's the first one. And then we also have corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup. So, you know, one corn syrup is not enough. We've got to have both. Um, so corn syrup, commercial corn syrup is going to come from genetically modified corn, most likely. So um, avoiding commercial corn things. I mean, high fructose corn syrup, we all know that it's bad for you. Um, but just avoiding um, conventional corn products in general is typically a good idea and going for organic if you can tolerate corn. Um, let's see, so we've got the corn syrup, the high fructose corn syrup, and then we also have some sugar because those two sweeteners were not enough to make it sweet. Um, we have, we do have some dried raspberries, dried pears, dried apples, okay. Um, <laughs> we've got some milled corn. We also have gelatin. Um, now, I'm a huge fan of gelatin, love gelatin, but I'm very, very picky about gelatin. You want to make sure that you're getting gelatin from healthy animals. Um, so the gelatin that they're using in here is going to be cheap from feedlot animals that are sickly. Um, so I really would avoid using the conventional kinds of gelatin and look for ge uh, gelatin that is specifically coming from grass-fed animals, grass-fed and finished animals, and also animals that are grazing on pastures that haven't been treated with any kind of uh, chemical fertilizers or pesticides or anything like that. Um, we've got some artificial flavors and we also have some natural flavors. And once you start diving into the world of natural flavors, who really knows what um, what's in there? So I won't go into some of the gross things about natural flavors, but just do some Google searching on natural flavors and you'll be kind of shocked at what you find out. So uh, we have those and then, yay, we have some hydrogenated soybean and cottonseed oil. First of all, it's hydrogenated, terrible for you, please avoid it. Um, but second of all, soybean and cottonseed are both genetically modified um, plants. So these are most likely coming from GM crops. So that opens up a whole host of other problems too. So avoid. Um, let's see, modified cornstarch, modified wheat starch. We have red number 40, blue number one, um, caramel color, which has also been linked to some health problems as well. Um, and then of course they have to go through and fortify it with vitamins, which if you have to go through and fortify a food with vitamins, then it's not really a food to begin with. So um, I tend to call things like all this stuff, um, 
food-like substances. So it's similar to food. Um, it may have some relation to food, but it's not really food. Um, so that's kind of a basic rundown on the ingredients. Now that was far from covering everything. That was just kind of pulling out the, the things that, you know, the talking points, the high points for me as far as um, the ingredients that I was seeing in here. But all in all, not all that great, not all that healthy for you. So if you're a Pop-Tart lover and you really, really want to eat some Pop-Tarts, but you've transitioned over to real food and you don't want to keep buying stuff at the store, then I really encourage you to hop over to our blog and check out the raspberry Pop-Tart recipe over there. Um, it looks so incredibly good. Like I said, I wanted to make a batch of them last night, but I just ran out of time. So hop over there and check that out. Um, so like I mentioned, the healthy Pop-Tart recipe, uh, this, you know, the commercial Pop-Tarts have 30 or 40 ingredients in it. Um, the regular, the healthy Pop-Tarts that we um, have on there, 13 ingredients, I think I counted, and no, nothing refined, nothing artificial. All of it is stuff that you probably have in your own kitchen, because I think I was looking through the ingredient list and it was stuff that I already had. I didn't even have to go to the store and buy anything special. So go check that out. Um, and then I have a couple of quick announcements too. So tomorrow we are going to be having a live webinar. Um, it's a cooking workshop to help you guys kick off the new year and uh, get some new habits installed um, for eating healthy. So we would love if you guys would come join us tomorrow. It's gonna to be at noon Pacific time. That's all online, it's completely free. Um, and when you guys sign up, you're gonna get a couple copies of the recipes that we're gonna be prepping live tomorrow as well as the prep guide and the shopping list. Um, so lots of goodies there and they're also gonna have some giveaways and some other fun stuff So we really hope if you'll um, you'll come and join us if you can't make it live Make sure you go ahead and register though so that we can send you the replay and all of the freebies as well So link to that is down in the video description below and then I did mention that I had an insider secret So to go along with our webinar tomorrow We are going to be running the last sale of the year on our memberships so we only run sales on our memberships between like Black Friday and the end of the year, every year. So after tomorrow, um, no more membership sales till Black Friday 2017. That's a long time away. So if you're ready to kick off the year um, and you need some help in the kitchen, you want to eat real food, you want to um, you know, really clean up your diet, clean up your family's diet, then a 20 Dishes membership would be awesome for you. And tomorrow is your opportunity. It's going to be for 24 hours only tomorrow, the 20. 28th um, so Wednesday um, so make sure you take advantage of that so we'll be announcing it here on Facebook uh, if you're on our newsletter list then you'll also get it um, as well and then the last thing is you guys can always sign up to get a free five-day meal plan we've got five different dietary styles I have the link to that in the video description below as well so you can download a five-day meal plan we've got paleo we've got clean eating which is more like a Weston A. Price kind of eating vegetarian um, uh, AIP, the autoimmune protocol, and um, which ones did they mention? Gluten-free. Um, so those five. So you can download any of them that you want or you can download all of them and use all of them. Um, so link to that is in the video description below. So before I go, leave me a comment down below about your favorite junk food. What would you like me to try to recreate or try to locate a healthy recipe for you? Um, and if you liked this video and got some value out of it, then, you know, give me some thumbs up or some hearts or some smiley faces. Um, that would be awesome. And then go ahead and share if you know somebody that could benefit from this. The shares really help us out. They help more people find our work and our mission. And they just let us know that you guys want more videos like this. So every Tuesday, I will be back here doing the junk food made real series. So thanks for joining me for episode number one. And I can't wait to be back here next week. Um, to talk to you guys some more. So looking forward to reading your comments. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.